Hello everyone, my name is Elliot Moravec. I'm a mechanical engineer here with the IDP team. Um, today I'm hoping to give a brief overview of our Sidewinder system and some helpful tips for field operation. So before I uh, jump into our presentation here, um, I'd first like to say that everything I'm going to discuss today is available in the Sidewinder manual. Um, as long with a hard copy, this uh, manual can be found on icedrill.org um, for quick reference and more detailed explanations of some of the topics I'll cover today. The next thing I'll say is uh, every Sidewinder kit will be shipped with an inventory list. Um, it's good practice to look through this inventory list and make sure you have everything before heading into the field with the drill. Um, so when you receive the kit, everything will be stored in this box and this piece of plywood uh, will shoot, uh, ship loose uh, along with that. Um, so in this box, we'll have everything you see before me here, um, including the sidewinder platform, the, the winch cradle, the rope winder, and this orange pelican, which has the variac and some of the spares that we ship with our sidewinder drills. So, uh, now that we've kind of gotten out, out of the way, the first thing I want to touch on is SIP requests. So with the Sidewinder drill, um, there's a few things I recommend requesting on your SIP. Um, number one is a generator to run your Sidewinder drill. Um, a 2K, 2KW uh, is good practice, and with that generator, you'll also want to request equipment for fueling it, such as a funnel and a jerry can along with a containment berm, a small containment berm for your generator to live in so it's not melting into the snow in the field. Um, the other thing that I sometimes mention is uh, requesting just some uh, flathead shovels for leveling out and digging, digging out a platform for your sidewinder to rest on. Um, sometimes the snow can be soft or uneven and it's good to have a nice solid base for this yellow platform to sit on before you um, start drilling. Um, so, in terms of setup, it's pretty easy. Um, we've, we've taken all the pieces out and kind of attached the bolts, but um, there's not a whole lot of assembly. Um, really, all you need to assemble once you get to the field is this, this wheel. Um, there's two bolts, or four bolts, that connect the platform to the base, and then there's two cross-pinning bolts here that uh, allow the platform to tilt out of the way. So though, that's all the assembly you'll have to do with the Sidewinder um, in terms of the platform. The other thing you'll have to do when you get to the field uh, is attach the rope winder to your core barrel. So because um, you'll, be, you'll be breaking these connections a lot, uh, we include a, a, a permanent connection for the core barrel adapter to the rope winder. And it's this uh, bolted connection here. This piece is called the Rope Attach Adapter, referencing the manual language. Um, your standard IDDO extension will plug in at the top here, and this will form your drill string as you make progress down hole. Um, that's the main assembly in terms of connecting the Sidewinder to your core barrel assembly. Um, other than that, uh, what you see here before me are some of the spares. So in this Pelican, along with the Variac, which is used to control the drill speed, um, you also have a spare handle from Milwaukee Drill, sp spare brushes for the Milwaukee Drill motor, and then finally also spare fuses for the Variac. Um, I won't get too in depth of how to make these spare replacements. Um, that's covered in the manual, but um, just know that they exist, and if you're having troubles with either the drill or the variac, that you have some options to troubleshoot that in the field. Uh, finally, um, yeah, that, yeah that, I think that should cover everything in the kit uh, in terms of other pieces that you see that I haven't talked about yet. Uh, this suspension supporter um, is standardly shipped with one of our IDDO systems. It's meant to integrate with the Sidewinder platform to capture your extensions when you're drilling. For example, this guard closes, and then 
say you're coming out of the hole and you need to remove an extension and uh, break that break that connection, you can first install this piece to support support your drill string down hole um, to not lose your drill when you're coming out or tripping down hole. Finally, the other piece that I haven't really covered yet is this safety bar. So when you're at the very, very surface with your drill, um, you can imagine you'll have your core barrel. This is for installing across the borehole to support your, support your drill and uh, yeah, not lose your core barrel when you're removing that final extension and you can't install this piece. Okay, so now that I've covered kind of the equipment that we will ship with your Sidewinder, um, just a brief discussion of operations. I won't go too into detail here because we have a good video that shows the Sidewinder in use in the field that kind of runs through a whole coring run and shows the different um, operation steps. But um, in general, when you're using the Sidewinder drill, um, first thing you wanna do is set your variac to about 80%. You can see here. As you adjust the variac, you get a different speed out on the drill. So a lower number on the variac corresponds to a slower drilling speed. A higher number corresponds to faster RPM of the drill. Um, so depending on what you're doing, whether that's drilling or winching, um, you can play around with the variac um, so you're at a comfortable speed for those two different operations. Um, yeah, I recommend starting slow and then as you get comfortable with the system, you can uh, gradually increase that variac to get more efficient with your operations. But really you should never be at 100% on a variac. Um, yeah, that's just not safe. So uh, yeah, go slow and then work your way up from there. Um, in terms of using the Sidewinder to trip, uh, rod or trip uh, trip the trip the hand auger down hole I should say um, first thing you'll need is to put the rope attach adapter in the cradle this you can imagine this is connected to your hand auger down hole runs over this pulley um, I'll just I'll just keep this demonstration simple because I don't have another set of hands here at the moment but you can imagine your drill is connected here on this drive adapter uh, yeah, imagine that. I'll just let this pay out because it's resting. One thing I'll note here, um, when you're using a Milwaukee drill, it's really important to have this handle uh, securely screwed into the drill. We've seen this handle strip out of the drill housing if this gets loose in the field. So just keep tabs on that and make sure your um, drill, is, drill handle is securely on there when you're using a Sidewinder. So to connect, connect the drill to the rope, Rope winder, just open up your chuck here. Install that on. Install that on the winder like so. Once you've kind of made the course adjustments with your hands, going the wrong way. It's good practice to use the key to tighten up the tighten up the drill. that tight and then you'll notice how I have the drill oriented this is kind of good to note um, to provide uh, a resistive torque when you're raising the drill it's important to have this handle um, resting on the winch base if you rest on the plastic handle this is prone to failure and we've seen that break in the field before so just make sure you have this handle down and you can raise and lower your drill string using the drill I won't, I won't demonstrate that at the moment, but um, yeah, that's the general procedure for setting up your sidewinder drill and the winching operation. Um, when you're using it for coring, you want to make sure that uh, your, let's see, you want to make sure that your rope, all loose rope and clothing is secure. You don't want um, that to get stuck. This is an exaggeration. But you can imagine that your core barrel is off the end here, your drill is attached at the end here, and then 
Uh, you can core by using a drill, spinning it. Obviously this gets pinned using just a standard IDGO ex um, extension pin um, from your hand auger kit. So that is the, the general operation, the two, two methods. Um, one thing I haven't pointed out yet, but is good to know and critical for using the sidewinder, um, is when you're coring, this needs to hinge out of the way, like such. And you'll have access to the hole here for um, coring operations. But, uh, yeah, the final thing that I haven't touched on yet is just the brake assembly for the rope winder. So you can see this handle here. Pretend we're chipping down hole. So you can see this pays out. So when you're when you're chipping down hole or chipping out of the hole, you can capture the rope uh, rope winder using this brake. You'll see how the brake latches into the tongs here. So you can imagine you're paying out, you're paying out, you're paying out. You engage the brake, and then if you and then as, as you grow more comfortable with the sidewinder itself, you can actually just spin the drill in reverse a little bit. That'll drop the brake automatically, and you can keep adding, keep chipping down a hole until you want to stop and add your next extension. Um, so yeah, I think that kind of covers all the, all the general operations of the Sidewinder itself. Um, again, I'll refer you to that video for detailed procedure on doing this and the kind of the order on how all that works. But um, yeah, I think that covers most of what I wanted to hit on today. The last thing I'll say, um, when you're done using the Sidewinder kit, Make sure to pack, or make sure to uh, only pack up everything when it's dry. So when you get back to McMurdo, take all the equipment out. Please dry it, otherwise it'll come back all moldy and rusty to Madison, I'll be sad. And then make sure to check the inventory list and verify you have all the original equipment sent with the Sidewinder. Aside from that, um, good luck and uh, happy drilling. <laughs>